Hey everybody, Jason here again with GDT Basics video question line, and today's topic is checking runout between centers. The question that was submitted is please refer to the drawing balloon parameter number 14. There's a runout on an OD with respect to datum C. Now, my question is if I wanted to measure its runout with respect to C, considering the part clamped between centers, and I'm using an LVDT to measure this, how can I measure this parameter? Please explain in detail. Now, to get out in front of this a little bit, an LVDT is just a really accurate way of measuring deviations with the sensor. It's kind of like a drop indicator, but way, way more accurate. So for the example we're going to go through here today, we're going to just discuss this using drop indicators, but the same concept applies to when you're checking things with an LVDT, your setup might just look a little bit differently. We're still trying to track the radial deviations. Now, take a look at this drawing here that was submitted. It's rather complicated, but I think we can break it down here together. We see over here detail B and over here detail A. Now, I'm going to make the assumption that in these details, we establish datum feature A, which is the cone from this center, and datum feature B, which is the cone from this center. Now, if we have datum feature B and we have datum feature A, we can create a single axis of rotation and call that axis datum axis A-B. Now, if that is accomplished in those details, we see that there's a lot of features that are being referred to A-B. We're checking the runout of these features with respect to the axis established by the centers on either end of this part. And that's perfectly legal. We can certainly accomplish this and tolerance these features with respect to that datum axis. Now, what we also see is we reestablished this feature that was being controlled to datum axis A-B as datum feature C. We've reestablished that. We qualified it to datum axis A-B. We've reestablished it as datum axis C. And what we see over here on item number 14 that is questioned here in this example is actually being controlled back to datum axis C, which is derived from, indirectly, the datum feature C. So we're checking to make sure that this diameter runs true to the axis of this feature. And that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish here. And we're making sure that we inspect it the same way. So the question is, how do we inspect this specification to this datum axis when we're between centers or on a bench center? So I've taken the liberty of simplifying this drawing a little bit to have a little bit of more of a deep conversation around it. We see a simple bench center here. And what we're going to do is we're going to establish, like I mentioned, datum axis A-B from the features on either end. So you have datum feature A, which is this cone here, and we have datum feature B, which is this cone here. And as we know, cones will give us a datum axis as well as a datum point. But if we establish a singular datum axis from A-B, it's going to be the shared cumulative effect between both of these cones. So we get datum axis a-B between these two centers. And if we squeeze this part between centers and put these little pins inside these centers on this bench center and rotate it, we're rotating about datum axis A-B. And we can certainly inspect all of the features on this part like we show here to datum axis A-B. And we can do that. And you don't actually have to redefine any of the other features as another datum. But what you have accomplished here is a little bit of a tolerance stack up by saying that everything is back to datum axis A-B and not necessarily directly to the feature that matters. This axis A-B is not necessarily a functional axis if you consider the final assembly. This part is more than likely not going to rotate around that axis. It's probably going to rotate around the axis established by the bearing surfaces or the more critical surfaces that establish where this part is in the final assembly. But again, we can certainly control all of the features to datum axis A-B. And we can simply inspect it by putting it between centers and rotating the part, just like we show in this animation here. We have put the part between centers, like we see here. And we're going to go ahead and rotate that part with an indicator or an LVDT on either one of these diameters. So we see we're rotating around the centers, which is rotating around datum axis A-B and both cylinders clearly have some level of runout. 
Now, to further answer the question, we're going to redefine this feature down here as datum feature C. And when we do that, we can refer other features to this datum axis. And we can see that this feature now has been changed to have run out of one thousandths with respect to datum axis C. Now the question is, how do I check this while still remaining between centers on A and B? And this is a rather tricky question. What you might be tempted to do is move one of your centers up or down or in or out to try and zero out our datum feature C. If you're able to accomplish this, you've then moved that datum feature and the axis rotation is now rotating about datum axis C. But that doesn't necessarily accomplish what you think it might. By simply moving this pin down, all we've done is adjusted where the datum axis AB is with respect to our table. And that doesn't necessarily re-zero it out, so we'll go ahead and bring it back up. And what we need to do is establish a different axis. We're going to establish an axis of rotation, ideally, that is the axis of rotation for datum feature C. You'll notice this indicator is not moving, but this one's moving wildly. That simply means we are definitely rotating around the axis established from datum feature C, or the axis of datum C. So what our goal is to get the axis of rotation to be perfectly in line with the axis of our datum feature. That's the goal. Now, it's a rather hard thing to do iteratively. And as you notice, we actually have to pull the bench center out of the center on datum feature A. Now, sometimes when we have the bench centers, they have a conical tip here and they sit inside the material. You might have to move the tip of this cone outside of that center. But if the amount of movement only requires you to sit a little bit off the original location, you can certainly shim this side over here to move this up and create a different axis. Or what you could consider is using a different end. And sometimes we have ends that look like this, where it's a flat plate, where it can easily sit wherever you would like it to. It can sit there, or it can be moved up and sit here, basically creating an axis from this point instead. So be careful, what our goal is, is to establish an axis of rotation that is down the center of datum feature C, not necessarily from the center of this cone and the center of this cone anymore, because we're checking the rotation about datum C. Now, if this datum feature C was a flawless cylinder, like we saw here, we would be able to eventually find the datum axis at the center of that datum feature. And then we would go ahead and rotate that part and you would see that the radial deviations with respect to itself were definitely zero. But that's only because it was a perfect cylinder and we dialed in the axis of rotation to the center of that feature. If that feature isn't a perfect cylinder, you would see something like this, where there would be definitely the axis of rotation is at the center of this part or the axis of the UAME, in other words, we can draw a perfect cylinder around it. We're definitely going to be rotating about the axis of that UAME. But as we rotate about the axis of that UAME, we would see that there are still radial deviations to the cross section of that feature because it's not a perfect cylinder. Those radial deviations are the run out of this feature with respect to itself, which is also another perfectly legal call out to check the run out of a feature to itself. This is just basically checking the form to the center of that feature or the axis of the UAME. Now, one thing to consider is this bench center down here might also not be on the center of this face. And if that's the case, we can't use the centers to engage our bench center at all. We would see that this cone is actually not on that surface. And no matter what we did, the axis we established from that cone will never be the axis for datum feature C. So we would have to actually offset and find the axis of the UAME like we see here and move the center pin from our bench center to this location and then put one at this location. Now, if we're able to rotate around this center, this is the axis of rotation derived from datum feature C, which is datum axis C. So we're trying to rotate about datum axis C. If we get to this point during any setup, whether we're between centers, 
in a chuck, or however we do this, our goal is to rotate around this datum axis. And then anytime we put an indicator on any of these other surfaces, while we rotate about this red axis, which is datum axis C, we are checking the runout of those things to datum axis C. Now I mentioned a chuck previously. A chuck would also be a very good option to try and dial in and check the runout of this feature to datum C but we don't necessarily have to engage datum feature C in order to create an axis of rotation that is datum axis C. I'll show you an example here. We can see this part in a four jaw chuck, which is a rather critical point of uh, interest. The four jaw chuck allows us to offset our part from the axis of rotation for the machine. And if we're going to engage a different diameter than our datum feature, like we see here, our chuck is engaging this larger diameter a much less critical feature, but we're going to use that feature to engage the part with the axis of rotation from the machine. We can see this hard red dashed line here is the axis of rotation that our machine will have. We'll rotate around the center of this outside diameter of our chuck. And what our goal is, is to match the axis of our feature to this axis of rotation. As you can see here, the envelope, the UAME of our datum feature, will help us establish what is truly the datum axis. And the goal during the setup is to get the datum axis from the UAME to line up with the axis of rotation of our machine. That is the intent and that is the goal. So what we can see here is we can actually tap on this part a little bit with hopefully a brass hammer so you don't mar up your part, but tap it so it's in good orientation, right? Now we have good orientation, it's level, but now we see that we're actually still not going to rotate around the axis of the machine. Now we've shifted these two jaws down and we see the original locations here. But now the axis of our datum feature is perfectly in line with the axis of rotation of our machine. And now what we can do when we rotate this machine around this axis is we're simulating datum axis C. And we can put an indicator on this surface or this surface or this surface and track the radial deviations as this cross section rotates around this axis. Those are the radial deviations with respect to datum C. And that is exactly what we should report and compare to this value here. So hopefully this sheds some light on how we can use different tools to inspect the runout uh, either between centers or with respect to unique datum structures. We don't always have to engage the datum feature, but we do have to make sure that the axis of that datum feature is what we are rotating around. So thanks for submitting the question and have a great day. Our goal is to be your best source for GDNT information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GDNT on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GDNT community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GDNT and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.